G'day, in today's video I'm toying around with an AMD, AM4-1700X. This one I purchased relatively cheaply, mainly due to the damaged pins that you can see here. So what I decided to do with it was, it was pretty darn cheap, 20 bucks Australian, about 10 bucks, 15 bucks US, and I thought I'll see if I can convert this from PGA to LGA which would entail removing all the various pins that are already here. But to my attempt, not much really worked. I was using a heat gun at 300 degrees at around 100% flow, and yeah, these pins weren't budging. I was hoping that they would be able to come off relatively easily. Even adding solder didn't really change much at all. So from there I pretty much gave up and decided to do a bit of a tear down on this processor. So by the end of it I will be ripping the IHS off this, but let's keep, keep trying and keep going for now. So with this, heat hasn't really made any difference with extracting the pins. You could go through individually and try and put a bit of a dab of solder on there and then remove it but due to the repetition of it, I wouldn't recommend that. Even brute force hitting them with a screwdriver didn't really make much difference. So mass pin extraction doesn't seem to be very plausible. So I'll move on part to part two of this teardown, where right now I'm using a small scraper tool to remove the adhesive on the IHS. So I'll progressively make it, or get a bigger tool each time. So this is just a small little scraper and then I proceed to use a couple of different ones. There was a surprisingly large amount of adhesive on here. Definitely to remove any air gaps or to stop it like to actually heat up inside that chamber as opposed to it escaping out the sides and then the chip overheating. And now I'm making a bit more progress getting, getting into it. The thin aluminum pry tool didn't do too much, so I used the thicker one, and that did prove to be like that. One thing I did fail to actually use the tear out of IHS is I forgot that AMD has now been soldering the IHS on rather than using thermal paste, which is what Intel was previously doing. As you can see, one IHS removed. Oh, wow, I'm a nostalgic guy, remember? So you don't have up. to. They're easy to admire and easy to make fun of. Let's say, talk about one destroyed no chip. <laughs> one of two the chip itself has remained on the IHS head and has been completely is ripped out of the PCB. So yeah, their definitely art. don't try to move that IHS on your to get even more attention due to their insecurities. I'm a dude. The Looking at the chip in its current state definitely what? reminds me There's of the earlier so many and AMD Athlon XP's. So processes from crazy things, early 2000s, and even where they didn't to get actually the have an IHS possible. on top of them. And the chip I'm itself here to ask, made direct really contact with the it. cooler. Let's back up and clarify exactly what method acting is. And just finally, for a little bit of SHIT and giggles, I tried to remove or desolder the chip from the IHS, which that was also proved unsuccessful. That was running at around a temperature of about 300 degrees. So overall, a complete failure on this one. So as you saw in this video, one complete teardown of a AMD 1700X. Hope this proves to be a little bit useful for you, if not a bit entertaining. If not, well, you win some, you lose some. Catch you guys in the next video. Bye.